Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dee and welcome back to a new Costco Canada haul. If you're new here, I share my Costco hauls every single week and in today's haul, it's my first haul of 2023. So happy new year. I'm so happy to be back. have a lot of fun things planned for you. Number one, we're going to go ahead and share this weekly haul. This year I'm focusing on budget friendly things that are just going to make sense and be better for my spending habits essentially. In this video, I'm going to share a few recipes. I'm going to be sharing a homemade lentil soup with homemade bread. It's perfect for prepping for lunches throughout the week and if you're busy working like I am and it's winter where you are and super cold and rainy or snowy, wherever you are, you're going to find that lentil soup is just comforting. It's a winter friendly food, it's budget friendly, it's vegetarian, and it's also delicious and healthy. So yay for that. And homemade bread. Do I need to say anything else about homemade bread? Homemade bread is awesome. And I find I enjoy making bread the most when it's winter time. In this video, I'm also going to share my homemade beef fried rice recipe. It's just perfect for busy weeknights. You can prep and plan ahead to make this one and all you need are pretty much leftover ingredients and something to just make it taste really good. So I'm going to share that with you in this video. With all that being said, I'm talking your head off on all the things to come in this one. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, you guys, so I pretty much have all my groceries laid out here, everything that I got on this shop. Now, this year, a focus of mine is going to be budgeting. I really want to do better in my spending habits at Costco. I tend to go ham pretty often, but you know how it is when you go into Costco. I did mention that I read an article back in December about how Canadian families are expected to spend over $16,000 on groceries by the end of the year and I kind of want to challenge that. I don't want to spend so much. I kind of want to be a little bit more on budget. So this is the start of me trying to choose more budget friendly options and also meals that are going to stretch and also more affordable than eating out and things like that. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, I grabbed this collapsible Lux tote. I wanted to get it for a while and I've been putting it off because like honestly, I didn't really need it. But now I do. I want to have it one in my trunk to store things. And I'm also going to keep the extra. I'm going to keep both of them in my trunk. One is going to be to store things and one is going to be empty for whenever I do my shops and I need another bag and I don't have any. This will just come in handy. So this is a trunk purchase. And I'm super excited about that. I also love that it collapses down and it's a pretty decent size. The colors are pretty nice and I like this little nautical feel going on. So you can use it for laundry or everyday use. This is literally a trunk purchase. So that's how I got this one. If you need help organizing your trunk, just get a bin and you'll be good to go. I also noticed that these liners are on sale. So I went ahead and picked them up. I don't have to buy them often. It truly is like a six month supply. So I don't ever have to buy this often, but I did need some. So I went ahead and grabbed it while it's on sale. You know me and my sales. I always get things on sale. Now I took a little break from filming and sharing all my shops with you all because I was spending time with family. And when family was in town, we picked up one of these and they're so good it finished like within three days so these are kettle corn like sweet and salty popcorners they're a little bit healthier kind of like little rice crackers or rice you know like those the circle ones the big ones that you get like at the regular grocery store I think the brand is Quaker so these are little triangle ones they're good for dipping good for eating on its own and it's super good I highly recommend that one I also grabbed some bread weekly staple these are going in my freezer you already know how it is with bread and moving on this week I noticed that CeraVe had their moisturizing cream on sale so I got one for now one for later lotion was on my list so in order to save a little bit I figured get one for now one for later and I'd be better off and I'm also gonna add one of these into my purse because I need a lotion for my purse and I didn't have one so this is perfect now I have two extra little 
pocket friendly lotions or purse friendly backpack friendly the kids have these in their backpacks as well for school so yeah i grabbed two of these this is great for winter skin it's so dry you just need extra moisture and this really does a trick i love this stuff moving on i got a few health items going into the new year coming back from being sick for so long i think i was sick for three weeks and that last week was like the worst plus my kids are on and off sick every other day every other week it feels like so i wanted to re-up on our health supplies so first up i tried to pick up this smarty pants kids everyday multivitamins they're supposed to take four of these a day. I don't know how long this is going to last. There's only 180 in there and I have two kids to go through this. But I wanted to try a new vitamin that would be healthier for them. Um, so I went with this one. My husband and I were out of our multivitamins. This is the one that we like, the Kirkland Signature 250. The price was like half the price of this one, even though this is on sale. That's the Kirkland Signature difference, you guys. But I'm super excited to try Smarty Pants for the kids. So we'll see. If not, I'll go back to the Kirkland Signature for them too. And I also grabbed some more elderberry gummies. We swore by this stuff. We were completely out because everyone's been sick since forever. So I grabbed this, it was available. And I wish I had gotten it when it was on sale a while back. It had gone on sale for $19.99, but right now it's $24.99, the regular price, and still half the price cheaper than what's available on Amazon. So great find. I also noticed that the emergency is also on sale, so I grabbed this. This is just good to have. Next up, I noticed something new in the warehouse, which are these strawberry Hello Panda cookies, and we already opened them on the drive home. The kids like it. I think it tastes good. It's super creamy, so if you don't like strawberry milk cream type taste, you're probably not going to like this, but it reminds me a lot of like the strawberry Pocky sticks that I get for them so often. So this is actually going to be great for like Valentine's Day because it's like pink, you know, and if you want to get festive with snacks, I'd recommend this. It's good. I also picked up some chocolate chip bear paws. They were on sale and my youngest really likes it. So I went ahead and picked that up. This is also open. You can see, but it is. We ate those in the car on the way home because they came shopping with me and that's why there's so many snacks. Snacks were just not on my list. Um, but anyway, speaking of snacks, I noticed that Black Diamond's cheese strings is on sale. So I picked that up. This is great to get whenever it's on sale and cheese string is just a good snack to have on hand and keep in your fridge. I did have creamer on my list, so I made sure I grabbed some more caramel macchiato creamer. And I also had some Tropicana on my list, so I made sure I grabbed some of that. There actually wasn't a lot left, so if you're looking for orange juice, don't wait. Get it because I don't know what's going on. There's not a lot of options for things like that recently. And also eggs. I noticed once there was a shortage on eggs recently, I grabbed some more Coscados, you know, favorite avocados. And I also grabbed some of these sweet baby carrots. This will be in my lentil soup. I need carrots and I also need celery for my lentil soup. So I went ahead and picked up some of these. I'm going to prep them and share some of that prep with you in this video along with making my lentil soup. I also grabbed two bunches of organic bananas. You know, this is a weekly staple. And lately I've been getting a lot of cucumbers. The girls go through it a lot. So I grabbed some more cucumbers. For a date night in, I figured I would get this Maine Lobster Ravioli. It's really good. They were doing it as a sample at Costco, but I had already planned to get this anyway, so it was perfect. Had some there, and I'm taking some home. So it comes with two packs in here, and this is just two different date nights, essentially. So this is good. And then to go along with the Lobster Ravioli, I got some crab legs. So my husband and I are celebrating our 10th anniversary we've been married for 10 years by the time that you're seeing this video and so i figured we can just do a nice little date lunch with this ravioli and some crab legs and some broccoli to make it wholesome and this is super cheap so yeah this is my way of saving a little because if i were to order this from like red lobster or something i know the bill would be like 150 <laughs> just for these two things alone and I noticed that this broccoli was on sale on this shop, so I grabbed some. It's steamable, makes my life easy, goes straight in the freezer. Fresh broccoli is hard to find lately because it's winter in Canada. Then I grabbed some of these uh, strawberries. They look so good. They're a little bit pricey, but they look and smell really good. And then last but not least, I grabbed some of these mandarin oranges. Now these were also pricey. This is pretty much everything that I got on this shop.
Here we have one teaspoon of thyme, one teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of salt, sea salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, two big tablespoons of flavo riz or flavo rice, one tablespoon of veggie better than bouillon paste, and one tablespoon of the chicken better than bouillon paste, and one heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. And these are pretty much going to be our aromatics for our soup base. We're gonna make some lentil soup today. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some veggies. That way we can get this in our instant pot and get this underway. Also for aromatics for our lentil soup, we're gonna need one small medium. I like to call this medium yellow onion. You can use any onion you like. This is the one that I have on hand and this is the one that I'll be using my food chopper to chop up and prep for our lentil soup. Next up, I'm gonna be using some of these sweet baby carrots. I'm just gonna go ahead and toss them in my food chopper and get this ready. And last but not least, I'm also gonna chop up some celery in my food chopper and this is gonna be great in the lentil soup as well. I'm also I'm also going to use some organic diced tomatoes. I'm going to add this into the soup for some texture and I love tomatoes in my lentil soup. And I'm also going to be adding some of this organic tomato sauce. This is just going to make it a little bit more saucy and soupy. And together these two just work really well together. They're both organic and everything that I'm sharing is from Costco except for the food chopper. Even the cutting board is from Costco. So. Yeah, I'm going to be using a bunch of these things. I'm going to go ahead and chop everything up and we're pretty much just going to dump it all in the Instant Pot and go from there. So I decided to use about six of these baby carrots and three stalks of celery and my onion. I'm going to chop them up. also have about two cups of lentils this is green lentil that I had soaking in water for a day that just helps sprout it and make it easier for you to digest and it won't upset your stomach or get you constipated or anything like that it's an easy way to intake any beans is to soak it for any amount of hours and you should be good but I happened to do it for a day because I was too busy to get to this sooner so I have here my two cups of soaked uh, green lentils and this is gonna go in the lentil soup
right you guys so I have pretty much everything I need to make my beef fried rice I have one medium or medium onion it's not really a small one but it's not medium so all I did was cut it in half I'm gonna be using my food chopper to prep that one I'll show you how I do that and I got that on Amazon I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to get one yourself it's a lifesaver highly recommend that on the side, my husband and I are gonna do some zucchini. I'm gonna saute that in a cast iron skillet, a smaller one to this one. I also have some cooked ground beef. All I did was salt, pepper, and some onion powder, and it smells so good. So that's already cooked up. That's gonna make this so much quicker. I also have some of the Kirkland Signature organic frozen mixed veggies. So all I did was just toss them in a little bit of water first to try to get the frostbite off of, of it basically. Um, when you're at the end of the bag, there's always a lot of like little ice particles, you know, <laughs> attached to it. So anyways, I got this thawing and ready to go in the pan. And of course I have some rice that I went ahead and made in my Instant Pot. Instant Pot rice is amazing. This is basmati rice. It cooks in like six minutes, it's so easy. So I have some cold rice here, which makes the rice even better. And I had already gone ahead and sliced up the zucchini, so I'm just gonna saute this with some of the veggie seasoning I grabbed in one of my previous hauls at the end of December. And I'm gonna show you how I do this food chopping. So I'm gonna be making this beef fried rice in this huge cast iron skillet. I find that it gets it nice and crispy and the cast iron is just the way to go. And I'm also gonna saute this in a different skillet. So let's go ahead and cut up this onion so I can show you how easy it is to do it and you don't have to cry in the process. And we're gonna go ahead and get cooking. Dinner should be done in like 10, 15 minutes because all the work is already done for me. The longest is probably gonna be to heat up the pan because it takes a while to heat up cast iron. This pan is also from Costco, by the way. And so is all this serving where basically all this food, the only thing here not from Costco is this food chopper. And yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my other skillet. I'm gonna do two things at once. So I went ahead and grabbed some of this avocado oil. I'm just gonna layer my pan generously because we are making fried rice. So you need like a good chunk of oil. I'm gonna let that heat up and then we're gonna go ahead and start cooking. And once this is almost done, I'll start on this because I don't wanna get carried away. <laughs> I don't wanna get carried away and distracted, so. Let's do it. So I've got my chopped up onions. I'm gonna go ahead and start with those. So now we're just gonna saute this until it gets a little translucent and then we'll add in our veggies. That way they can kind of cook with the onions at the same time. There's really no need to wait for one thing to cook at a time. They're going to overlap and cook just fine by the end of it all. Look at how beautiful all these little pieces of onions are. That would have taken me minutes if I had done it the old fashioned way. Using that food chopper is a saver in the kitchen. Alright, so now that I'm starting to see a little browning happening with the onions, I know that they're pretty much almost ready so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my frozen veggies at this point we're gonna follow the same process and just let this kind of saute for like a minute or two there's really no need for this to cook for too long because number one no one likes overly soft veggies and we kind of just want to thaw it right now because we have lots more frying to do Alright, so this is already looking pretty good to me. We're just going to go ahead and add some salt and some pepper. There's no need to be shy when it comes to seasoning at this point because we have a lot of rice that's going in here and we definitely want our rice to taste good too. Same thing with the pepper. You don't have to go light on the pepper. There's a lot of food that we're seasoning with just this base, so it's okay to go a little ham on this part. I just love the sound of a cast iron sizzle. 
At this point, we're gonna go ahead and add the ground beef. Let those flavors mix together nicely. This is literally one of the easiest meals to make. And I'm only using half a package of my organic ground beef. I used the other half to make a pasta dinner that I'm gonna share with you all later at the end of the month. It was an Insta favorite for the family, so I already know it's gonna be featured in my January favorites. And I'm gonna save that for then because I don't think everyone's gonna want it again twice in a week, but it was really good and it lasted for like four people. So really it serves eight. And the rest of the beef is now in here. And this is gonna serve us again for a couple nights. That's what I love about stretching, budgeting, and just knowing what to make when. So you're using just the ingredients that you need and getting the most nutrients and deliciousness out of every meal while saving a little along the way. Normally I would do a whole package of ground beef and I find that that was just wasteful. It would leave too much food for us to finish and this is a better way, a budget friendly way and Honestly, you'd never know that I'm only using half the amount of ground beef that I need to in this one. So we're gonna go ahead and let that do its thing for like a minute. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the rice and some soy sauce and this is pretty much done, just like that. Let me give this one quick little toss. You can already see the meat is browning back up again really nicely. I like when the ground beef gets a little crispy. I feel like it gives it better texture and it makes it so the entire meal isn't just like much, you know? I really love the organic ground beef at Costco. The texture is just on point. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add in our rice. This is cold leftover rice, which works the best for fried rice. It's just so good. And now all you gotta do is just mix, mix, mix until this starts frying up and we're gonna be good to go from here. Oh, this is making me so hungry. So now it's soy sauce time. I put this in for the last minute and I don't add too much soy sauce. I think that's enough. That's starting to look really good this is the perfect color what i love about doing this in the cast iron is that you're guaranteed to get some crispy bits and i don't know about you but whenever i'm making fried rice i love to have the crispy bits so i'm gonna go ahead and taste test this and again what i love about the cast iron is that this is gonna stay on the heat and keep cooking for just a little bit longer so there's really no need to have heat at this point. It'll get crispy at the bottom and we're gonna get that texture that I was talking about earlier. Let's just taste it for flavor and we're gonna move on to our zucchini after. Here's my little bite. It's so good. That's really good. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more salt and pepper. It's missing a little heat and it could use just a little bit more flavor. Alright, so to my skillet, I am going to add a little bit of avocado oil. And when this is heated, just give it like 30 more seconds, we're going to go ahead and add the zucchini. But before I go ahead and add the zucchini, I'm actually going to saute up really quickly some of this minced garlic. It's just going to give it extra flavor. And how else am I going to finish this whole thing of garlic? Got to add this stuff on everything. You guys should definitely get this. It's in the seasoning aisle at Costco. So I have here just like a tablespoon. And now we have our zucchini. Just gonna add all of it in at once because I don't want to do this twice. This is gonna 
that go really well as a side to add more greens to the fried rice and the leftovers are gonna be perfect for pretty much any meal because it's gonna taste super, super good. So at this point, I'm starting to see that some of the garlic is turning brown, which means that is flavoring up really nicely. I've got some pieces that are already getting a little translucent. I'm not going to cook this all the way through because I like a little crunch on my zucchini when it's sauteed like this. So I'm going to go ahead and add some seasoning and that will help this sweat a little bit so it can cook a little bit faster. So this is a seasoning I'm using. Got this also from Costco. It's so good. I know I normally use flavor rice, but like I like the heat on this one. So we're just gonna shake a generous amount in. More seasoning the better. It's a little bit salty, but I won't go overboard. This one is calling my name. All right, so this is pretty dry. I'm gonna add just a little dash of water to make sure that everything at the bottom doesn't burn. I didn't add water. I feel like this would burn and we don't want that. So this is just gonna help all that flavor stuck at the bottom lift up. And it's gonna keep the zucchini nice and green because I like it that bright green color. I don't like it as much when it's like that dull green color. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'm going to kill the heat and just let the heat of the cast iron skillet cook this for the last minute because things are looking like it's burning and we definitely don't want that. But that brown that you see on the zucchini along with the bright green is pretty much my sign that this is essentially almost done. This is a quick, easy side to put together. you guys so approximately 15 minutes later we have a healthy nutritious dinner on the table we have a mostly organic beef fried rice the beef is organic the mix of veggies is organic the avocado oil is best in class the only thing not organic in this recipe is just the basmati rice but I would say that this is a pretty healthy dinner for a family and also super budget friendly. I know having this as takeout would be so much more money and to go along with it we have some sauteed zucchini which look Pinterest worthy. Oh my goodness, these look so good. Cannot wait to try some. I wanted to taste test it but I didn't want to burn my tongue off and not enjoy my meal. But 15 minutes we'll have this easy weeknight dinner ready and the entire family can enjoy it or you can meal prep this and do this for your lunches if you're just cooking for yourself this is just a great way to serve at the table in this skillet it's hot so make sure no one touches it but yeah this is our dinner we're gonna go ahead and plate this up and start eating and i hope you try this recipe if you do leave a comment to let me know make sure you have all the ingredients that you need on hand and as always, taste test everything. Make sure that the flavor is to your liking. My taste buds are gonna be different than yours and I wanna add some heat on this so I might add some dried pepper flakes on top on mine because I know the rest of the family doesn't like this as spicy as I do, but I love spice. So this is gonna be our dinner.
All right, you guys, the last recipe I'm gonna be sharing in this video is a long overdue one. I'm gonna share my homemade chocolate chip cookies with you, and to make this, it's super simple. It's gonna be the gooeyest chocolate chip you've ever had, and my secret ingredient, which you'll know about by the end of this, is gonna be the reason why it's just unforgettably good. So with all that being said, let me just walk you through all the ingredients that you'll need. So here we have one one fourth cup of flour, we also have a half cup of sugar, three fourth cup of coconut sugar, that's my secret ingredient. You can also use brown sugar, but I find that coconut sugar gives it this mysterious flavor and it kind of caramelizes it in a way where it's just absolutely amazing, so trust me on that one. I also have half a teaspoon of baking soda here and I have one teaspoon of salt, I'm using sea salt. Next up I have one egg and half a cup of melted butter and I'm going to just toss in one teaspoon of this vanilla. I don't measure, I just pour for like a second and that's my teaspoon. And then I am going to be adding in, folding in these chocolate chips. They're semi-sweet and milk chocolate mixed together. I just buy the big bag at Costco and whenever it's almost empty, I re-up. And so right now we have a little mix going on, but this is like the only way to never have to always buy chocolate chips. Just buy the big bag at Costco once and you're done for like a good one, two years, depending on how much you use this stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm using about half a cup of this. And you can use more if you want. You can use less if you don't want it to be as chocolatey. Honestly, if you're trying to win the Best Mama Year Award, uh, add more than half a cup. But I promise you, you'll still win the award with half a cup or a little bit less. It's just so good. And my secret to making this absolutely amazing is to make it the day before. Like make the dough the day before. Because then once it sits for a few hours, it gets gooier and even better. So we're going to mix this together and then it should put together a dough like this. I made this one the night before just so I can show you what it looks like. This has been sitting in the fridge and if that doesn't look like delicious cookie dough, I don't know what does. So this is what it'll look like. I like to store it in a Ziploc bag and if you're not going to eat it all or make it all at once, toss it in your freezer and it'll be good for a couple of months. But if you're going to make it like all week, just keep it in the fridge in the zippy bag and just scoop out, roll in a ball and you're good to go. So this is what it's going to look like once we're done mixing this together. And mixing this together literally takes like five minutes. So let's just go ahead and do it together. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just mix all the dry ingredients together. That way this is already like well combined. All right, so that's good enough for me. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my egg. So I'm just gonna put this here because I'm gonna use the fork to mix. This is how I make it like mess free or like as little mess as possible. So we're gonna start by adding in the melted butter to our dry ingredients. Then we're gonna go ahead and add our egg. And then we're going to put one teaspoon of this vanilla, but I'm just going to pour for like a second. It might be a little bit more than one teaspoon, but we're going to be fine. That's the beauty of not measuring. It's like a mystery every time. Now we're ready to mix this all together. Once this gets doughy, we're going to fold in the chocolate chips at the very end. Make sure you scrape all the corners because you're cheating yourself your dough if you don't. Who doesn't want absolutely amazing cookie dough? What I love about this cookie dough is that if you're not a fan of chocolate, you can add anything else. Like you can add raisins in here if you wanted to, or you can just make the cookie without any chocolate at all. You can alternate like how much sugar you want. If you're in the mood for a cookie that's not very sweet at all, you can go half of the amount of like brown sugar or coconut sugar. You can even have the amount of the regular sugar. I was using organic cane sugar, by the way. So you have the option to make this to your liking. You literally can't go wrong. And this is like the most minimal ingredients known to mankind. And I'm telling you, this is gonna be amazing. Like it's wet looking now. But when this sits in the fridge for an hour or two or overnight, which is my favorite way, to prep and make this, you're gonna see just why homemade chocolate chip cookies or my homemade chocolate chip cookies are so good. Like you're gonna see why, so, so good. So now we're gonna pour in the chocolate chips 
And then we're just gonna fold this in because it's not really gonna stay together. It's gonna kind of like fall out, but you gotta see just how amazing this looks. Like this is gonna be very chocolatey, more chocolatey than the batter I made last night to show you guys. So we're gonna have some super chocolate chip cookies pretty soon and so now I'm just gonna go ahead and get my zippy bag toss this in my zippy bag toss this in my fridge and we're gonna be good to go this is the most amazing cookie dough that ever lived like look at how amazing this is oh my gosh cannot wait to bake those we always eat everything that we bake on one day because it's just that good So here I've just gone ahead and labeled it by the month just in case I forget that we have cookie dough. I will always know when I made this one and then I just wrote cookie dough on there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Anyone going in our fridge or freezer seeing this would know that this is legit cookie dough. But just like that, you let this sit for a while. If you don't have a lot of time, try just one hour and it will still be gooey. But if you bake it right away, it's going to be more cake-like and not cookie-like and you need this to be the best chocolate chip cookie you've ever had. Actually, I guess we can call this a double chocolate chip cookie since there's two kinds of chocolate chips in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in my fridge. And in comparison, this is what the two look like. This is looking like more cookie dough because I didn't squeeze this down as much as I did this one. And the color looks differently because this is hard and this is soft. But yeah, I've got my cookie doughs ready. I'm just gonna bake this in the oven into little balls on 350 for about 12 minutes and it'll be perfection. Right, you guys and just like that we have our cookies we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven technically we could have done 12 but I don't count to make it exact I just make it whichever way there are some that are smaller and there's also some that are bigger but I'm gonna go ahead and toss these into the oven on 350 for about 12 minutes because I can already tell these are some hefty cookies Okay, so it's been 12 minutes and these cookies are definitely done. So I've gone ahead and put this on the cooling rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these cool for a few minutes. They're gonna get flatter as they cool and these are gonna be so gooey and good. I'm gonna plate them up in a little bit, but we first we have to just wait a few minutes for this to cool. If you were gonna have this with ice cream, I wouldn't even let it cool. I would just plate that, add some ice cream on top and you'd be good to go like that. But I'm gonna actually enjoy this as like a dessert and a snack, so I don't really need the ice cream bit. This is just gonna be good on its own. All right, you guys, it's cookie time. Don't these look like the most delicious cookies ever? This is the thickness. This is the deliciousness. I'm gonna break it apart just so you can see how amazing these are. Do you see that goodness? It's so good, oh my gosh. The chocolate chips are like perfect. The texture is just on point. And when you bite into it, you're gonna see just why these are my favorite cookies and the reason why I believe I make the best chocolate chip cookies ever. The flavor combo is next level. I hope you try this, enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy eating well at home for less and that you enjoyed all the recipes I shared in this video today. We have officially made it to the end of this haul. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you try out some of these recipes. Leave a comment to let me know if you're gonna be picking up anything that I featured here in this haul. I'd be more than happy to talk like what to get and how to prep it and how to just make your budget stretch a little bit. So if you're new here, I'd love for you to go ahead and join the fam if you haven't done so already. Subscribing is free and it means the world to me. Also go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.